friends, and uh, welcome to my mid-Victorian crisis. Um, today, well, today was originally supposed to be a video on how bone broth is a lie, and the etymology and history of stocks and broths in the culinary world. And then I got a message saying that we were having a severe winter storm watch. Well, warning. I think it's already gone to a watch. Um, you know, to tell you the truth, our little slice of heaven here in the Arkansas River Valley of the mountains in Colorado has been blessedly free from all of the hell is freezing over weather that the rest of the United States have been receiving lately. And um, so this is supposed to be our first big storm. So instead of making stock and broth and soup and all sorts of other lovely flavorful liquids, I am going to finish weatherproofing, well, winterproofing, uh, my apartment. Um, where my bedroom is, is two walls of windows, and it doesn't matter how good anything else is, that is going to be cold. So today I'm going to be talking about making the historically accurate, not historically accurate, historically authentic insulating curtains um, for my room. And so, <clears throat> a couple of months ago, I bought some fabrics. Uh, one is a polyester satin. That's really pretty. And the other one is a cotton velveteen, which both of those together will produce the insulating effect that we need. Now, when I first started making the curtains, I didn't know where my measuring tape was. But in my stash, I found a length of fabric that I cut off for another project. Uh, you can see it's like really long. And this actually happened to be the exact length of what I wanted my finished curtains to be. So after I ironed it and laid it down on my fabric, I added a couple of inches here and there for seams and for um, the pocket rod for the curtains to go through. I honestly don't know how long this is, so I'm going to sit here and measure it right now. And it is going to be approximately... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Sixty... Sixty-six inches, which is what my finished length is going to be. So I attempted, again, without measuring tapes, to cut four panels, salvage to salvage, of my fabric. This is the inner layer of my fabric. It's a rich chocolate brown, gold, and sort of a robin's egg blue. And since I started on this, I have since realized that I didn't cut all of the lengths properly, nor did I cut them all 70 inches long. So I have some extra fabric left over that originally I was going to make pillows out of, but I'm having to use to make a pocket rod. But seamstress stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, this one might actually work. These are a 53 inch wide panel. Um, so simply what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over the, the selvage stitch it down by machine. Once that is done, I will go through and make a hem, double turned hem for it. And hopefully that'll be straight. They haven't been straight, but hey, it's homemade, right? 
piecing and wonky hems are period. And then I will put in a uh, total of four inch pocket rod and uh, then I'll show you how I put them up and did the, the curtains. So. <laughs> So, um, <clears throat> I've ironed up the hem, trying very carefully to match the sides of the pattern. Um, you can see that the cut is really wonky. Um, once this uh, cools down, I'm going to go through and fold it again to get a double fold hem. So I've got the bottom hems done. It's not exactly beautiful, but you know, it's for me, not for like architectural digest or a client. So now comes the fun part of measuring the, um, the length and seeing if I have to add anything to the four inches that ends up being the pocket rod. So this is how I actually measured it using these little clips and the cut side of this strip of linen. Now this strip of linen was originally cut through drawing thread. Um, basically you make a line in the fabric by removing a single thread and then you cut along that. So I gotta continue measuring this out and see if I need to add any extra. Now that's definitely not as much as I would like, so I'm going to go cut a strip about the same width out of my extra fabric and stitch that together and then fold it over to make the uh, um, pocket for the pocket rod. Because this part is going to be encased in the pocket rod pocket, I just went ahead and only folded it over once. Now, right side to right side, I'll attach this, I'll attach this to the top of the uh, curtain. So I'm working on pressing this. So right now I just high steam, high heat, and eventually I'm going to press the whole thing over so the pocket rod can go into this pocket. Hopefully I have enough gray thread to at least finish this one. That is the end of that spool of thread and I got it sewed I'm so happy all the rest of this is going to be done with white or black thread depending on what looks best so that's the first pair of curtains that I put up and it's going to get velvet over top of it now I am going to put the curtains up over there. Landlord or her previous tenants had some curtains up. Don't know if you can actually see the holes. And I'm gonna sort of match those. I'm gonna come over a little bit and uh, so more of the window is covered. But next time you see this, it'll be up. One supremely messy bed later, the first row of curtains are up! Yay! Yay! Bedtime! So what I have here is 10 yards of Italian cotton velveteen. Now velveteen, like velvet, is a fabric with what's called a nap. It's a soft raised surface. You can find the nap in velvet, velveteen, um, 
<clears throat> Blue, Blue Clay also has a nap. Now, let's see if I sleep. In Velveteen, the nap doesn't necessarily matter much. It's very soft. If you rub it one direction or another, it doesn't change the positions. Um, you can see on the back here, it's a little bit different. You can see on the back here that it's a little bit different from like a plain weave. Um, that's because when the... Get some technical jargon in here. <clears throat> when the warp threads, or when the weft threads, excuse me, go through the warp, they loop up kind of like a loop rug. And then you go through and you cut them off to create this soft, um, very nice fabric. Ah. <sighs> Due to the emergency nature of this, oh, I did a lot of that on that curtain off camera. Um, I can talk you through some of it in the next clip, but oh, I got two curtains up. Uh, you probably can't see it. But the velveteen was actually too narrow for the windows. I guess I didn't read it right. And um, so I ended up, well, I bought uh, 10 yards of the velveteen. And I took uh, one full panel length and cut it into four pieces so I could tack on a little bit on the edge. Um, this is a bit of a temporary solution because I do intend to uh, definitely Victorian these curtains up eventually with uh, tassels and trim, but these just needed to get up tonight. So, yay! Well, it's Thursday, and I have about three hours to get my uh, second batch of curtains up. Uh, the weather system coming in kind of spiked my fibromyalgia, which is why this project's been going so slow. But I do have one up, I have one more to make, and yeah, better get to it.